We are set. Okay, so I'm doing my presentation on caprine arthritis and encephalitis. Um, yeah, and we, I think you have to use a down arrow. I think we discovered it's not, oh, maybe it is working now. Um, so what it is, it is a uh, RNA retrovirus. Uh, so it's a relatively new virus. It was discovered, first documented in uh, 1974. So um, it's pretty new compared to a lot of the other viruses that we know about. Um, and for being so new, it is one of the largest uh, threats to the dairy goat industry. Um, uh, like the name suggests, there are two syndrome types. Uh, the first type is the encephalitis, which is uh, swelling of the brains. Uh, this happens two to four months, but uh, can occur uh, in older animals as well. Um, so this causes weakness in rear legs and muscle uh, paralysis, um, and eventually death if not uh, if not taken care of. Um, uh, a lot of times the uh, the younger goats that exper uh, experience the encephalitis portion of it don't often survive, even uh, even though uh, even if it's caught. Okay. Uh, the second type is the arth arth uh, arthritic, and it's pain and swelling of the joints. Um, this happens to goats that are about a year and a half and older. Um, some of the symptoms are weight loss. Uh, they'll have large joints, especially the front knees and the hock joints in the back. Um, the pain can actually cause them to uh, leg lameness, so they end up walking on their uh, knees instead of actually standing. So like that bottom picture? Yes, there. like the bottom picture here. That's crazy. Um, um, so it's spread and it's very uh, infectious. Well, not terribly infectious unless it is, uh, but especially through bodily fluids. And uh, so the number one is milk, so the mother is spreading it to its offspring. Uh, this is 98% of how it's spread. Uh, so the, uh, when nursing, the, uh, the virus spreads from the, uh, the dough to the uh, kids. But it also can be spread uh, by blood or nasal discharge or things like that. <coughs> blood would be uh, open wounds or even sharing needles. Um, so you could actually take blood sample from an an one animal and if you don't change your needle, you could give the next animal the virus. Yes, exactly. Um, it to you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the fastest, well, the only way uh, you can figure out if your animals have this for sure is through a blood chest test. Um, these have been become a lot more accurate in the past few years and a lot cheaper. Um, it's called the ELISA. ELISA. The ELISA. Sorry. And that's enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, just like those SNAP kits, basically. Um, and they recommend, uh, re recommend it to, uh, that you test yearly because even though it might show up negative, it could be just the virus that is staying dormant. Um, so uh, it's only, uh, so even though it, uh, an animal tests uh, negative the first year, yeah, the next year, even though it has been isolated from all other CAE, can possibly show, uh, it can show positive. Mm -hmm. Um, so there is no treatment uh, for the virus, viral infection itself, so once an animal has it, they can't get rid of it. However, you can treat uh, the, the symptoms, so the uh, encephalitis and the arthritis. Um, a lot of the treatments for the arthritis is just uh, keeping good uh, herd management, such as trimming their hooves. Um, Non-steroid anti-inflammatories as well can help just the pain. Uh, so the only way you can actually uh, stop it is by preventing it. Okay, before you go on, um, see they're using a needle and syringe to take the blood sample, but if you're, let's say if you're doing a lot of blood collection, um, that's kind of like, I don't want to say old-fashioned, but you know, the, 
they make those evacuated tubes that then the blood is collected in the vessel that's going to be processed. If you have a syringe, now you've got to put that blood into something else. You don't leave it in a syringe. So, um, and the other way, I mean, the, and I, I could bring one Monday, I could show you. It, it works on anything. I can suck up my coffee into a tube. But what's neat about it is it's in a tube and it's sealed. And you know, you know, then you either process for plasma or serum. This, you've, you're going to pull out, and first, first of all, it's kind of unhandy because you've got to pull that plunger down, right? The evacuated tubes, there's no pulling of anything. You just stick the needle up through that other sharp needle, and it draws itself. And so it's amazing. If you have, you know, if you have one, fine, that's one. But if you have a herd of forty. And those tubes come in different sizes, and they come with different anticoagulants. They come plain if you're going to do serum. And so it's like, you know, for one, that's fine. But if you have a whole bunch, you got to, especially if you don't want to spread the virus, you have to get another syringe for the next animal, right? But if you have a vacutainer, it's in the tube already, and there's, you know, you change the needle then for each animal. But So that's a little, you know, that's a great way to show it. You... Um, like the top picture there, you always block off the uh, jugular vein low, and then you bleed high because the blood is flowing down this way. And you, know, you block it off, and you tap it, and you <clears throat> on most animals you can see pretty well the jugular vein. So I was just surprised. They, I guess it's just a picture of showing how to do the jugular. Vein. Yeah, um, we uh, my family usually uses the needles, but that's just because okay. we have a large. We like usually there's three or four of us out there, so we have plenty of manpower to help. Okay. But yes, they're usually very prominent, especially on the bucks. And, uh, yeah. Now, did you say you use a needle and syringe, or do you? Uh, we use the needle and syringe. Okay, okay. But now, do you get a new syringe for the yes. new animal? Yes, okay. you syringe a needle for every animal. Oh, okay, okay. And what size syringe do you use? Uh, How much blood are you collecting? Usually we collect two, two to three uh, milliliters. Uh, I think we usually use a five gauge, oh, a five, five cc. CC. And then do you, then you, Put the blood into a test tubes then? Yes. Uh, well, uh, or, they have uh, or s certain containers that some the testing place provides. Yeah, just the un unvacuumed. Oh, okay. Tubes. Okay. Just regular tubes. Yep. And is, is there an anticoagulant in the tube, or do you know? know? Does it say to mix it? Nope. There's no anticoagulant. Okay, so it's just a plain tube, and then you ship off that tube. Yes. Okay. Uh, through the mail. Okay. Uh, you have to use biohazard things because yeah. it is yeah. animal. Related. However, yeah, it's usually just two or three shipping days, so you can have your results. Yeah, okay. Um, so prevention, uh, the easiest way to prevent is to uh, bottle feed the kids. Um, this just prevents, even if you're, you're, the mother came up negative and ends up uh, becoming positive between the times that you tested and she's kitted, uh, that you are for sure not going to spread it to the, uh, the kids. Uh, they. Highly suggested powdered milk replacer. However, you can also, if properly uh, uh, properly pasteurized, you can use uh, uh, milk from the mothers. However, it's okay if you have it pasteurized, which would kill the virus, I guess. Um, it also suggests separating infected animals just to prevent, uh, even though it's a it's very unlikely uh, from nasal discharge and stuff like that. There is a small possibility, so just they just suggest separating the animals just to decrease these mm -hmm. possibilities to pretty much negligible. Uh, when you get new animals into your herd, you should they should be CAE negative and should be t uh, usually from a CAE negative herd and just continuous testing. Okay, questions? All these diseases are very interesting. Um, so now, what if, so like if these are dairy goats, you're milking them, do you still milk a positive animal? Uh, you can, there's no negative side effects to humans. Okay. Uh, we, uh, we just, uh, in case something happened during pasteurization, we consumed it ourselves, we didn't, would not feed uh, CA positive dough the milk from her to any of our kids. We always made sure we used CA negative okay. and pasteurized just a little bit. Extra. Right, because now if you have a large enough goats, do they, do you, I mean, do people sell 
goat's milk commercially? I mean, I don't... Um, you can. Uh, actually, in Wisconsin, they actually just came up with a really cool uh, thing. It's pretty much the same thing as a dairy we'd have around here. They even have a uh, turning... Parlor or like parlor. a milker? Yes. Okay. So that was really fascinating to mm -hmm. me. Um, so they can. Uh, personally, we just... My mom, it's, it's her hobby, so mm -hmm. she likes to make cheese. Oh sure, I bet. Yeah. So, how many have had a goat's milk? Consumed goat's milk. One. I'm counting myself too. Two, three, four of us. Five, of course. Yes. I kind of like it. Uh, yeah. I mean, you can tell the difference. Yeah. I don't know what the fat percent is compared to a cow. Um, it depends on like the breed, such okay. as cows. Um, I raise Nubians, which are known for their high butter fat. Okay. And I believe it's about. Okay, 4.5. Comments, questions? I'll bring I'll bring a, the vacutainer. That's the brand name of some evacuated tubes. And I'll show you how I can use it upside down and pull my coffee out of my cup. Because, you know, it's, if you do a lot of animals, those are handy because they different size tubes, different anticoagulants. And, you know, with a syringe, you have to put that blood someplace. You never leave blood in a syringe. I mean, but... If you do the vacutainer, it goes right into the tube, it's sealed, you ship it off or whatever. So, okay, other questions?